In today's video, we're making a 3D drawing machine that makes glowing patterns appear from thin air. At least that's what it looks like, but in reality, there's a lot behind it. The main idea for this construction is to remove this center piece and replace it with this piece of plexiglass. And you'll see that it's just ever so slightly larger. On each edge, we'll put LED lights so that the plexiglass will be illuminated, or whatever you would call it. This is an old 3D printer that no longer works, so I figured I would take the parts from it. We are going to need basically every single component, the LCD screen, the motherboard, power supply, wires, motors, and even the aluminium extrusions. This is the brain that controls all the motors. It's using something called TMC drivers, which should make the motors almost completely quiet. I started by joining two pieces of extrusions because I was too cheap to buy new ones. At this point the acrylic was in place. I could start to map out roughly where to place the extrusions to get an idea of the motor placement. And that should be somewhere around here. Maybe we could make a simple mount that attaches the motor like this. So I started to sketch up a 3D printable mount and here's how it turned out. These are the rollers that slides on the V-slot extrusions and because the wheels are plastic they generate very little noise. I then added the X-axis and connected the wires. 3D printed a solid marker holder so it didn't have a spring-loaded mechanism which I suspect could be a problem. Here I am making sure the motors and the rollers works before the maiden voyage. That looks really good. That's exactly what I wanted. Whoa. The idea is to trap light inside the acrylic and make the patterns appear to have a glowing effect. Let's, let's try it with white. Oh, that, that's way better. That is so cool, that's sick. This is what every math teacher uses when posting videos on YouTube. So I hot glued the LEDs all around the acrylic and this was the result. Here we go. I'm already seeing that the lines over this side is a little thinner than the lines on this side. You know, it's level here and here and here and here, but not right there. Dude, this was really what I was looking for. How cool is that, man? It was possible to remove it with dry paper, but water definitely helped. Also, an automatic remover is on top of the list. I then 3D printed a marker holding device that would constantly keep a very light pressure on the acrylic to battle disengagement on certain parts of the acrylic. Sketching up a case for the main window was pretty straightforward, except for the fact that it was a bit too heavy. Whoa. Dude, I'm not sure that can hold the entire weight of, of the panel. Let's rewind and see where things went wrong.
Instead of using the front panel like the black gate of Mordor, I decided to just seal the box and make a couple of openings instead. You see, I need access to the window's backside to clean it, but we also need a hatch on the backside to swap markers, or if something happened that needed repair, it would provide a bit more space. The answer, not one hatch, not two, but three. Two on the sides and one in the back. So I made these 3D printed hinges and hooked up the doors. So here's one of the very first patterns that I ever managed to make. It's not quite in the center, but let's not discriminate because of that. It's also trippy to watch the color of the marker have no influence of the actual color of the print. Only the LEDs will. Yeah, you see if we have green or white, the entire thing becomes green basically. I brought it downstairs to paint it, so here's some footage of me doing that. should be all set and ready to go. I start by importing a pattern to a software called Sanify, which tells the machine where to go. Here I'm making sure it's within the frame of the acrylic, so I have to adjust the size. Plugging in the SD card, removing the previous print, which is low-key pretty satisfying by itself. Grabbing markers, clicking start print. I am releasing the marker right before the print starts. An automatic marker lifter is also high on the list. The print turned out great, but the pattern was mediocre at best. But here is what the original pattern's movements looks like. Here are the time lapses that I managed to capture. I also attempted to convert images to free-flowing lines, but it seemed impossible, and here's me crying about it. This machine can't jump from one place to another, it has to be continuous all the time. What happened? It didn't work. And I was supposed to save it as a S-A-S-C-I-I. Did it work? No. So now the problem was, I need to convert an SVG to G-code. All the free software seems to be garbage about this. Here are a few bonus prints I did live on stream. I want to try one more print. What the f 
fuck? Yeah, that's right. Me and Chat built this live on Twitch. So if you think you can handle hours of what you literally just watched, then you know that's the place. Okay, I didn't know where to put this in the video, but I'm just gonna be quiet for a few seconds so you can hear the sounds of the machine. Kinda sounds like RTD. Alright, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Have an awesome day. Bye.